here. You just heard Tired of It by the Waffle Stompers off the uh, Words with Enemies EP. They're out of New Brunswick, New Jersey. Uh, their music is produced by Danimal Records. You can buy their songs on iTunes. They've got some great energy. Uh, I'm going to do a video embed for their video for We're In For A Long Night on my WordPress site, since I'm really liking this video a lot. And of course you can see this same video on their Facebook page and listen to some more music while you're there. So go check that out. Now on the outro, we're going to have a track by the Pepper Pots. Uh, so this time I'm going to be talking about a piece I saw in the latest issue of Science Magazine. This came out a couple days ago. If you don't know, Science is pretty much the premier scientific journal in the world. Uh, they do some of the most amazing findings out of all sorts of scientific disciplines. You got biology, of course, uh, ecology, chemistry, physics, geology, astronomy. Getting an article in science basically means you're in the big leagues. Uh, this article is called uh, Field Research on Bees Raises Concerns About Low-Dose Pesticides. And this is a summary of some rather startling findings about bees. So there are two major studies summarized here. We're going to give you a brief summary of both. Uh, first off is a study by the University of Stirling in the UK. Uh, they worked with bumblebees, uh, Latin name Bombus terrestris, and they were given uh, pollen that was treated with the pesticide imidacloprid. So they gave bumblebees uh, pollen that had been treated with imidacloprid pesticide. So some background here, imidacloprid is what we call a systemic pesticide. And this is in contrast to what are called contact pesticides. You can think of a contact insecticide like a coat of paint. It covers the outer layer of the plant, keeps it protected, but that protection really is only skin deep. Once that pesticide wears off, the plant is no longer protected. So systemic insecticides are a deeper form of protection. The plant directly absorbs the pesticide by the roots, the leaves, whatever, the pesticide gets inside the plant and then is circulated throughout the plant, giving a much longer lasting protection. Now, imidacloprid is an insect neurotoxin. It basically interferes with the insect's neurosystem, the nerve system, causing paralysis and death. Now, imidacloprid is designed to protect against various sucking insects, pests, such as mites, aphids, and thrips. And if you go to a garden center, chances are you'll find products that contain imidacloprid to protect your trees from pests. But with that, protection may come at a price. So in this study, uh, the bees had been fed pollen that had imidacloprid, and they were compared with healthy bumblebees that had a diet that was free of imidacloprid. So you got your experimental group, a diet with imidacloprid pollen, and your control group, just regular pollen. So the researchers fed the bees for two weeks and then placed the colonies in the field and observed the bees six weeks later. So the bees which had eaten the imidacloprid, had eaten the pesticide, weighed less uh, so the bees were smaller, and those hives had fewer queens. So the cl conclusion that was drawn is that the bees that had eaten the imidacloprid were gathering less food, and that the colony as a whole was a weaker colony. Now there was a similar study uh, 
summarized here, this one was done in Avignon, France. Uh, the researchers glued radio tags to honeybees. The honeybee is Apis mellifera, and the Latin literally means bees bearing honey. I really kind of like that Latin name. And now that must really take some skill, too, to glue radio tags on bees. Uh, it's not the kind of thing I'd sign up for, but I got a lot of respect. You must really have to have a steady hand to put radio trackers on bees. Anyways, they treated some of the bees with a different pesticide, uh, thiamethoxam, and compared it against untreated bees. Again, you got your experimental group uh, treated with pesticide, your control group uh, not treated with pesticide. They gave them what was called a sublethal dose. It's not enough to kill the, the bee outright, but, you know, it should be the uh, safe dose, and let's see what happens. Um, so thiamethoxam is in the same chemical class as imidacloprid. They're both in the chemical class called uh, neonicotinoids. And so being in that same chemical class, it kind of would make sense that uh, imidacloprid and thiamethoxam might have the same harmful effects in bees. So anyways, the bees that had been uh, treated with thiamethoxam had a more difficult time finding their way back to the hive. Fewer bees returned. And that's not a good thing, because fewer bees returning, the colony is, of course, going to get weaker. Um, so it's kind of interesting, two different sort of observations on the bees. The first study, really studying the colony, you know, the number of queens, the weight of per average bee, whereas the second study, the France study, looking at the individual bees, are they coming back to the hive? Uh, both have implications on colony health. And this is pretty scary stuff. So the bees found less food, had a harder time making it back to the hive, produced fewer queens, so all around weaker colonies. And this just gets worse. Uh, bee colonies throughout the U.S. and Europe are being hit with a symptom called Colony Collapse Disorder, abbreviated CCD, where the bee colonies die off or just abruptly disappear. Now, I'm not trying to suggest that the pesticides are the sole cause for colony collapse disorder. The jury is still very much out on CCD. CCD could be caused by pesticides, uh, nutrition deficiencies, parasitic mites, insect diseases. It's even been suggested that cell phone radiation and genetically modified crops might be to blame. Uh, the best minds in agriculture, that's beekeeping, uh, the study of bees, they're still trying to figure out what causes CCD. So I want to be clear on that. I'm not saying that emitted cloprid causes CD, C, CD. I'm not saying that. I am saying that between uh, CCD and these new findings about midacloprid and thiamethoxam, uh, that the bees, they're in for a tough fight. They already had it bad, and it looks like things out there might be getting even worse. Uh, it's a scary problem out there. Uh, remember, this article is about the danger of low-dose pesticides. These are the kind of pesticides where you don't need to apply a lot. Um, doesn't take a lot of pesticides to get that protection, uh, but it may not take a lot to cause harm to bees. So, I mean, who cares, right? They're just bees. Who likes getting stung? Nobody. Okay, this is another straw man argument. I can't make this stand up because bees are pretty damn important. A lot of crops are pollinated by insects, and the European honeybee has earned a reputation as a real workhorse for pollinating crops. Honeybees are pretty easy to manage. Uh, so honeybees pollinate our crops to produce some of the fruits and vegetables we enjoy. Of course, we get honey out of the deal. Uh, that's not even mentioning what might be happening to native bees. So who knows what harm we might be causing to native species. I worry about what might be happening to solitary bees. Solitary bees don't live in a hive, so they might even take the hit even worse, because their population just isn't as concentrated. 
and it's pretty scary stuff. Right now, if I wanted to get a metacloprid, I could go to the garden section of Fred Meyer, Walmart, Home Depot, Wilco, any number of businesses, and pick myself up some imidacloprid. And if I hadn't done my research, I'd really be none the wiser. You know, I gotta wonder how many people are out there using this stuff unaware of these new findings on bees. Now, I've actually run into imidacloprid a bit, uh, you know, on my own throughout my career. Uh, so I've got some imidacloprid stories of my own, uh, but I'm gonna put them up on the WordPress site. You can see them there. Now, there were some counterpoints to the article. In the Bumblebee study, the counterpoint was raised that, hey, in your experimental group, you were just feeding them pollen with imidacloprid. You only gave them pollen with imidacloprid. So, you know, basically saying this is the worst possible case scenario. You know, is it really that likely that in nature, the bees are only going to find pollen that contain imidacloprid? Probably not. Probably that would be the worst case scenario where the diet is solely pollen with imidacloprid. You know, perhaps the bees are hardwired to avoid the pollen that contains the pesticides, you know, doing some sort of preferential foraging where they'll expend a little bit more energy to get pollen from over here because the pollen over here kind of tastes funny. And after all, I mean, the human sense of disgust is kind of hardwired to make us avoid the spoiled foods that are going to make us sick. Another researcher uh, stated that he doesn't believe that the pesticides in this study would necessarily accumulate to these harmful levels in crop plants, saying that, you know, yeah, the uh, systemic pesticide, it's in the crop plant, but it's not in high enough concentration as was tested in these studies. So you really need to kind of test lower concentrations that simulate what would be out there in the environment. Um, at any rate, the world governments are taking notice. Uh, the European Food Safety Authority is considering new guidelines for assessing the risk uh, these pesticides pose to bees. And the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency seems to be following suit. So that's kind of where things are at uh, with this uh, summary. So I'm Two-Tone Miles, and I hope you learned something. And on the outro track, we have uh, Wanna Blindly Trust in You off the album Train to Your Lover, uh, released in 2011 by the Pepper Potts, uh, and it was put out by uh, Doubleback Records. You can get the music on iTunes, CD Baby, Amazon. Uh, the Pepper Potts are from Catalonia, Spain. I was a little nervous to approach them about using their music. Uh, my Spanish is poor enough that I had to ask in English. And I'm real fortunate they said yes. And to be honest, I'm a little starstruck here. Uh, this is a band I've got a lot of respect for. Their album Shake It has been a regular mainstay on my MP3 player. I need to spend some time with their newer stuff. Uh, they put out great music. Uh, I'm going to put up a link to one of their videos on the WordPress site. But if you like the music, show support for this band by checking out their sites. Uh, just an all-around great band, and I'm really enthusiastic that uh, they're letting me use one of their tracks. So, enjoy. Oh, yeah, my 